The movie follows the journey of Yeonwoo, a tenacious and accomplished lawyer. Despite facing numerous challenges in her childhood, including the loss of her father at sea in New Zealand and the subsequent passing of her mother due to illness, Yeonwoo persevered. With her visual impairment, she held onto the memory of her father who she remembered wore a white uniform to work. <laughs> But her experiences left her feeling lonely and isolated. However, these hardships only strengthened Yeonwoo's resolve. She made a vow to become successful on her own terms, refusing to rely on anyone else. In the beginning of the movie, Yeonwoo is tasked with representing the son of a wealthy business magnate, who has been accused of harassing a young woman. Despite her belief in the man's guilt, Yeonwoo upholds her duty as a lawyer, and even intimidates the victim and her mother into dropping the charges. At the end of the day, Yeonwoo engages in a martial arts session with a friend who hints at her single status at 39 years old. In response, Yeonwoo makes it clear that she has no interest in being in a romantic relationship, especially not with someone younger than herself. As the night falls, Yeonwoo encounters her client, Park, who is the father of the entitled young man she defended earlier that day. Park has grand plans to construct a lavish apartment complex and seeks Yeonwoo's expertise in negotiating with the current residents of the proposed site. He is eager to start the construction without delay and is confident that Yeonwoo, known for her exceptional negotiation skills, will help him achieve his goal. As a token of appreciation, Park gifts Yeonwoo a sleek luxury car, and a credit card that only the privileged few have access to. The next morning, Yeonwoo eagerly hopped into her shiny new car and headed to work. Despite her busy schedule, she made a pit stop at the place where her mother's ashes were interred to share with her the news of her plans to move to the United States for a better life, far from the hardships her mother endured. However, fate had other plans for Yeonwoo. On her way back from work, she was involved in a catastrophic car accident that left her in a coma. <coughs> Upon awakening, she found herself in a strange, otherworldly place, surrounded by a sea of unfamiliar faces. Confused and disoriented, she approached a woman who appeared to be a receptionist, and asked her where she was. The receptionist gasped in surprise, then quickly scurried off to consult with the head of this mysterious place, Chief Lee. Yeonwoo found herself at the South Korean branch of the Afterlife Transition Center, a place where human spirits pause before continuing on to the afterlife. But her time here was not meant to be permanent. The receptionist uncovered a shocking mistake made by Chief Lee. It was the 84-year-old Yeonwoo, not the 39-year-old Yeonwoo who was supposed to have passed away. Due to this error, the elder Yeonwoo was miraculously brought back to life, while the younger Yeonwoo who should have had much more life ahead of her, had died and was now at the Afterlife Transition Center. Upon realizing the blunder, Chief Lee was furious with his assistant. But his quick thinking soon presented a solution to the problem. He proposed that Yeonwoo take on the identity of another deceased woman, Kong, for a period of one month. Coincidentally, Kong had also died prematurely, as a result of a similar error that caused her to suffer a heart attack before her intended death from an accident. Unfortunately, Kong's spirit had already been sent to heaven, leaving her unable to return to life. Lee offered Yeonwoo the opportunity to live as Kong for a month, after which her spirit would be restored to her original body. Alternatively, she could opt to go straight to heaven. With this agreement, Lee switched Yeonwoo's life with that of Mrs. Kong. As Yeonwoo soon discovered, Mrs. Kong was a housewife married to a humble civil servant named Soong Huan. This was not the life Yeonwoo had envisioned for herself, she never wanted to be a wife or mother. To her frustration, she now found herself in a family with two young children, a daughter named Ha Nul and a son named Ha Ru. Overwhelmed by her new circumstances, Yeonwoo vented her anger and frustration by shouting at the sky, railing against Chief Lee and her fate. Despite her pleas, she remained trapped inside Mrs. Kong's body, unable to escape her new life. Before long, Haru approached Yeonwoo with a smartphone and wallet, claiming that she had left them behind. Upon inspection of the wallet, Yeonwoo discovered Mrs. Kong's identification card, learning for the first time that her new body was that of a woman five years her junior. Haru accompanied Yeonwoo to the bus stop where she was to catch her ride to school. As they arrived, Yeonwoo was greeted by a group of mothers who were also sending their children off. To her surprise, they invited her to join them for a coffee at a nearby cafe. Feeling uneasy and out of place among the chatty young mothers, Yeonwoo suddenly felt nauseous. She excused herself and rushed to the bathroom where she ended up throwing up. The mothers, upon seeing this, began to suspect that Yeonwoo might be pregnant. Yeonwoo was feeling overwhelmed by her current circumstances and was ready to take off her wedding ring. 
Just as she was about to do so, Lee appeared, threatening to end her life if she couldn't accept her new reality. Yeonwoo was told that she had to live as a member of this family for a month before she could return to her old life. Despite her best efforts, she struggled to adjust to her new family life. In an attempt to relieve her stress, Yeonwoo went on a shopping spree using Kong's credit card, spending so much that she reached the limit on the card. This was a wake-up call for Yeonwoo and forced her to curb her spending habits for the first time in a long time. That evening, during dinner, Yeonwoo expressed to Soong Hu on her desire to take a month-long trip to her parents' house to clear her mind. However, to her shock, Soong Hu revealed that her parents had passed away a long time ago and they didn't have a house of their own. This meant that Yeonwoo's plan for a vacation had to be cancelled and she would have to stay with the family for the next month. Later, when Soong Hu asked Yeonwoo for intimacy, she was taken aback and threatened to file a sexual harassment claim if he touched her again. In her panic, she physically pushed him away. Feeling hurt and confused, Soong Huan watched as Yeon Wu took pillows and went to sleep in the living room. He stayed alone in the bedroom, feeling sad that his wife no longer wanted to be intimate with him. The following day, Soong Huan confided in a colleague about Yeon Wu's strange behavior. His colleague suggested using the threat of divorce to get a reaction from her. If she took the divorce papers and filled them out, it would mean that she had been unfaithful. As they discussed the plan, Soong Huan noticed his boss, Mr. Choi, walking by. He saw this as an opportunity to pitch a new project to Choi, but his proposal was swiftly rejected. Choi insisted that Soong Huan focus on the sidewalk renewal project, even though Soong Huan argued that the money would be better spent on more important projects. Despite Soong Huan's objections, Choi demanded that he follow orders and complete the sidewalk project. As Yeon Woo sat sipping her coffee with her friends at the cafe, one of them presented her with a petition against the construction of the new apartment complex that was being built by Park's company. The mention of the construction project immediately reminded Yeon Woo of her recent conversation with Boss Park, who had plans of building a luxury complex. Without a moment's delay, Yeon Woo rushed back to her apartment to gather the necessary files and information on the construction project. She grabbed her credit card on the way out, determined to treat herself to a shopping spree. However, before she could leave, her gaze was drawn to a picture of a woman hanging on the wall. Yeon Woo couldn't help but suspect that the woman in the photo was none other than Kong, which meant that their lives were undergoing a strange switch. Later that day, after Soong Huan returned home from work, he presented Yeon Woo with a divorce form, as his friend had suggested. Upon seeing the form, Yeon Woo felt a rush of excitement. She began to ponder the possibility of getting divorced, as it would mean that she would no longer be burdened with the responsibilities of taking care of her family during the waiting period. However, their discussion was cut short by the arrival of the police. They had come to inquire about Kong's missing credit card and suspect that Yeon Woo was the one who had taken it and used it for shopping. One of the officers even went as far as to label Yeon Woo as a shameless old thief. Soong Huan was incensed by the officer's insult towards Yeon Woo. He asserted that as a law school graduate, it was unacceptable for the police to behave in such a manner. He demanded that they apologize to Yeon Woo, which they did, hanging their heads in embarrassment. After leaving the police station, Soong Huan finally broached the subject of Yeon Woo's potential infidelity. She immediately denied the allegations, and thankfully, Soong Huan believed her. He gently stroked her hair, causing her to blush. It was the first time a man had ever touched her in such a way. Later that evening, Lee came to see Yeonwoo once again and warned her to be kind to Soong Huan, or else he would send her to heaven and replace her with another spirit. A few days later, Yeonwoo joined Soong Huan at an event attended by various city officials. Mr. Choi was also present, trying to win support for the sidewalk project. Yeonwoo's curiosity was piqued when she heard the discussion about the project and she raised questions about why the sidewalks were constantly being replaced despite being in good condition. Soong Huan was concerned that Yeonwoo's questioning might reflect poorly on Mr. Choi who was his boss, and he took her out of the room to caution her against embarrassing Mr. Choi in front of the important officials. But Mr. Choi soon followed them out, and Yeon Woo seized the opportunity to expose his corrupt intentions regarding the sidewalk project budget. Upon being confronted, a furious Mr. Choi insulted her with a vulgar name. Soon Huan's temper reached its breaking point and he punched Mr. Choi, sending him crashing to the floor. Yeon Woo is deeply moved by her husband Soong Huan's actions as a good husband and father. She begins to reciprocate by becoming a good wife and mother as well. However, she believes in teaching her children the value of hard work, and thus she makes them earn the money they want by doing household chores. The family was thriving until one day, trouble befell their daughter Ha Nul. Like most teenagers, Ha Nul had a crush at school and believed that the boy, Gyung Hoon, felt the same way. When Gyun Hoon invited her to his house, she eagerly accepted, thinking it was a chance for a romantic encounter. However, when she arrived, she noticed a camera in the room and quickly realized she had fallen into a trap. Gyun Hoon and his friends had intended to use her to make an adult film. She was fortunate enough to escape from the dangerous situation. 
Upon returning home, Hanul retreated to her room, slamming the doors shut behind her, causing Yeon Wu to become concerned. After seeing Han Nul's distressed expression and hearing her story, Yeon Wu learned that Han Nul had nearly fallen victim to sexual harassment. Overcome with embarrassment and fear, Han Nul refused to return to school. <laughs> In response to the situation, Yeon Wu asked to meet with the principal and Gyung Hoon, who arrived with his lawyer. The lawyer explained that Gyung Hoon had remorse for his actions and offered a sincere apology along with compensation as a show of good faith. Feeling overwhelmed and uncomfortable, Yeon Wu excused herself to the restroom. She was reminded of a similar case from her past, and she felt the weight of the situation as she now stood in the shoes of the victim's mother. As she reflected, Han Nul entered the restroom and asked her mother to consider accepting the peace offering. She understood the financial struggles her family faced and feared that dragging the matter to court would only cause more harm. Despite the peace offering, Yeon Wu chose to fight for her daughter's justice. Upon returning to the principal's office, she confronted Gyung Hoon, threatening to expose his wrongdoing on social media. This made Gyung Hoon livid, and he erupted in a fit of anger, hurling insults at Yeon Wu. But Yeon Wu stood her ground, delivering a swift kick to his leg and pulling him down by his hair, demanding a sincere apology. The incident only fueled her determination to be a good wife and mother for her family. Lee also came to realize that she had become comfortable in her role as a housewife. However, the news that Yeonwoo would have to return to her former life in a matter of weeks filled her with worry and sadness. She feared that without her, the family would be without a motherly figure. Soon Huan received some devastating news from Mr. Choi. He had been informed that he would be transferred to an overseas office. Both Soong Huan and Yeon Wu believed that the transfer was most likely due to the recent beating incident, and Mr. Choi holding a grudge. In an effort to save Soong Huan's job, Yeon Wu went to meet Mr. Choi at a restaurant and begged him to reconsider the transfer. But when her pleas fell on deaf ears, Yeon Wu took matters into her own hands and threatened to report Mr. Choi for corruption. The mere threat of exposure was enough to send Mr. Choi running. However, their troubles were far from over. Haru suddenly collapsed on her way home and had to be rushed to the hospital. The doctor delivered the devastating news that Haru was suffering from retinitis pigmentosa, a rare hereditary eye disease that could cause blindness. Yeon Wu had a personal connection to Haru's illness. She too had suffered from a similar eye disease as a child, but her vision was restored after multiple surgeries. Despite the surgeries being expensive, they depleted all of her mother's savings. Yeon Wu realized that she was the reason for their financial struggles after her father's death and felt regret for ever resenting her mother. However, Yeon Wu was at a loss as to why Haru had to suffer from the same disease. She confronted Lee, demanding an explanation, but he couldn't give her a clear answer. All he could say was that Yeon Wu was Haru's mother now and her illness may have been passed down to her child. The day of Haru's surgery had arrived and Lee came to collect Yeon Wu, as it was time for her to return to her original body. But Yeon Wu refused to leave, not until Haru woke up from his surgery. Lee tried to convince her that if she returned to her original life, Haru would surely heal on his own, and his illness would disappear without a trace. Despite Lee's reassurance, Yeon Wu was determined to be by Haru's side during the surgery and to say goodbye to the family before she left. Eventually, Lee relented and allowed her to do as she pleased. Saying goodbye to Ha Nul, Haru, and Soong Huan was a difficult and emotional moment for Yeon Wu, but she knew she had to keep her promise to Lee. As she left, she couldn't shake off the heavy feeling in her heart, but she was grateful for the time she spent with this new family and the love she gained from them. Yeon Wu, now back in her original body, quickly made her way to the hospital where Haru had undergone surgery. However, her search for them proved fruitless. They were nowhere to be found, not at the hospital or their apartment. To her surprise, the apartment was even inhabited by someone else. A month had passed since Yeon Wu had last seen her adopted family, and she had made the decision to sever ties with Boss Park and begin a new life as a lawyer who fights for justice. She also chose to move to a new home, as the spacious apartment where she lived only served to amplify her feelings of loneliness. As she packed her belongings, she stumbled upon an album filled with photos from her childhood. Upon opening the album, she found a folded photo that featured both her and her father. To her surprise, her father was none other than Lee. Along with the photo, she discovered a message from her father, declaring his love for her. With tears in her eyes, she placed the photo next to her mother's ashes, vowing to be a better daughter to both of them. As Yeon Wu prepared to depart on a journey to New Zealand to clear her mind, she was taken aback by the sight of Ha Ru standing in front of her. Soon after, Ha Nul and Soong Huan arrived, but to her surprise, none of them recognized her. While on the plane, she struck up a conversation with Soong Huan and learned that they were visiting his sister in New Zealand. Thrilled by this twist of fate, Yeon Wu saw an opportunity to reconnect with her former family and perhaps even win back Soong Huan's heart. The film closes with a beaming Yeonwoo, brimming with hope and happiness at the thought of reclaiming her role as wife and mother to the one she loves.